Been going about five minutes now and we're already at 53 pounds. At the meeting this morning I wasn't able to get here first thing but I had Kirk here this morning and he was taking care of it he said our vacuum pulled down overnight to uh, the lower 200s isolated it everything looked fine he went ahead recharged the uh, 195 pounds back into the system so that's what we recovered was 195 which didn't make a lot of sense to it it's supposed to be 190 pounds total in the circuit and we had a pretty significant leak for uh, over a week on that discharge line is when it popped up. What that means is at some point, sometime in the past, somebody overcharged it, not sure when, not sure why or whatever. After startup and I finish this piece of the video, I will include some kind of tech tips on the recovery and the subcooler process. We're actually here because the discharge uh, line had a leak there at the gasket. That's what you saw us repairing and making the gasket for. We couldn't source one locally, blah, blah, blah. Need to get this thing online, so we made one. That's why we were here. We went through this whole process. I did a short on this, just showing that leak and the fact that it was there. I didn't really explain much in the short, but if you want to check it out, go look at that. We started with a 91, 92 degree loop. We're, we got it down to 88, but we already cycled three times on the circuit, and it's just too much load for it to handle. That loop can get so much load on it that the condenser can't even keep up with the circuit, which is kind of what's happening here. We have 150 PSI suction, which is like 82, 83 degrees of saturation. And that's really high for a single circuit. And we've got it fully unloaded. That slide valve is not engaged. And we're pushing our current limit to the point of it just it's just too much. We're, the, the compressor is exceeding current limit because of the pull down. And that's with no slide valve. Now part of what's hurting us is the customer had all of the fans running on each air handler, which is fine. He had no reason not to at the time. What I've got him currently doing is turning all the fans off. And what that's gonna let us do is we're gonna be focused on just processing the loop at that point. Currently misting the coils just to help give that head pressure a little assistance. And that's actually keeping us under control. So this is not something you would want to do. And we are in the process of cleaning the coils. Technically, we've already given them one cleaning already, but we're gonna do another rinse on them. They're dirty, but they're not excessive in my opinion. Either way, the point is we're keeping the head pressure low enough. We got all the fans on. We're not pushing our current limit the same way we were. So as long as we can maintain that long enough to get the load down in the loop, all the fans are off now. Eventually we won't need to do that. The system load will be low enough, the head pressure will come down and we can start to get this whole system under better control. We ran water on the coil until we got down to about 75 leaving. Now we've got 75 entering and 70 leaving and we're maintaining head pressure just fine. We're running current limit as we stand but everything's maintaining on its own. We're not having to continue running the water. We're about to go up and check the condenser fans. There's all four fans are online. We got good air coming out of them. Me stepping up on the slide output should have caused a pressure spike. Heck, we should have heard it because I went 10%. I'll go another 10%. We went up a little bit. I'm not convinced that was us. Like We ought to be able to hear that compressor. So go ahead, uh, volts DC, 20 volts. And then we're going to read across this red and black here. Two. Yeah, we're giving two volts. That's 20%. Uh, and see, we're not changing. So I think our slide may be stuck. Is that coil a problem? Is the control valve a problem? Or is our slide stuck? But now it makes more sense as to why we were overloading so much. 
and that was tripping me up for a minute because typically I, sh I should be able to load up just fine and I've got plenty of air colds that I've gotten up the 80s 90s before and they don't like it but they'll pull down as they need to it was tripping me the fact that I couldn't make this one do the same thing without extraordinary measures now it makes a lot more sense as to why 42 ohms looks like so it's not a coil so at that point it's either a valve issue or it's a slide issue sit there and gently tap on that stem a little bit and just gently so the problem we end up finding the control valve on the oil slide has gone bad it's causing the compressor to ramp at hundred percent at startup we tried to shock it some to get it loose but it just wouldn't work with us so the circuit one compressor that's completely down is the same compressor that I had to do a control valve in a while back I did a video on that if you're interested we're gonna pull the control valve that's brand new out of that one we're gonna put it in this one I've already verified the coil and all that electrically is fine it's a mechanical issue with the control valve or that slide is actually stuck. To do this, we're gonna be isolating the compressors. So the discharge, the suction, and the oil lines all have to be isolated off. We're gonna recover the refrigerant out of the discharge side of the compressor, pump it into the suction line port. Yeah, this valve is completely completely stuck it ain't moving it ain't doing nothing this valve fell is causing the compressor to overstage at startup the fans were having trouble catching up in time and just the whole system was was not acting properly didn't matter what the load was doing ultimately because of the excessive amp load and the pressure it's causing the contactor to hammer which eventually put so much stress on it that the uh, discharge gasket started to leak. Thankfully, it didn't take out the compressor or blow anything else up in the process. Oh, uh, it's frustrating, frustrating, frustrating. We got the new control valve in, and that slide itself acts like it's actually stuck. We can't get it to unload beyond where it's at. Nice part is, it's not dead. It's just not going to run very well, but it's all they have. We're going to modify our program and the logic on that controller and we're going to do our best to control it accordingly and they're going to keep it online 24-7 and not let the load build in the space. Hopefully the new chiller will come in and we'll be able to get everything put in before that compressor just takes its last breath and it's done completely. Anyway, I'm still going to do those tips and have all that. That's going to be right next. So stick around for that. Appreciate it guys. MTT. Don't click out, just, just hang tight. Word of caution, whenever you're putting on these uh, core removers, don't snug it down before you've pulled the core. Uh, if you do, uh, you're going to get that uh, stem stuck in there. So what you want to do is you want to just put it down just enough to where it tightens, then take your stem out, and then after you get it back, it should push out, close your valve, and you should have a stem. Now, a lot of people, including myself, took me a while to realize this. What happens is the O-ring, I'm not going to take it off at the moment, but the O-ring that's in there, as you tighten down, will pin. If you're not familiar with how I do this, so I'm pulling out of the liquid line into the recovery G5 Twin. Coming back, I have a custom subcooler. This is my own personal design. I built it. Trade Fox, if you're interested in talking, just give me a shout. But uh, we come in and we're going to do a counter flow through this brace plate heat exchanger. And we're coming back out of it after it's been subcooled and into our recovery cylinder. If you've ever been doing a recovery and your machine starts to bind up and, sh and shutter, and your fix for that has always been to clamp down on the suction side, the reason your machine does that is because you have too many restrictions on your discharge side of your, of your pump. So things that slow down your recovery is going to be core depressors or cores anywhere in the system. I always make sure that I pull my core depressors out of my hoses and they're nice and open and there's nothing that's going to get in the way. Quarter inch hoses are big enough to flow full liquid through the machine and not have any problems at all. Right now I'm pushing 100% liquid through that G5 and it's not giving me any trouble whatsoever. I'm also using a subcooler so that I'm not building head pressure in the tank. If you start having issues or if you want higher flow rates for your recovery, Make sure you remove all those restrictions on the discharge of your pump. Then you'll be able to run that suction side full open and you won't have to choke it and you'll get higher volume 
and faster flow. But the other critical key is you can't let your tank build pressure. If it starts building pressure like that, it's going to react as a restriction the same way if you had a depressor in there. 